Hi everybody, in this video we are looking at mutations in terms of the actual changes to the genetic code and then how that can affect the amino acid sequence and the proteins. So mutations aren't always going to affect us. If you've got a sequence of DNA here, so there's a base sequence, this sequence of DNA is going to then be transcribed into this sequence of RNA and this RNA will then be translated into this series of amino acids here. Okay, so we've got our codon and then our amino, amino acid. So we have here an amino acid sequence, which is the primary structure of a protein. Obviously, it would be much longer in reality. The primary structure of a protein then determines the secondary structure, which determines the folding into the uh, three-dimensional tertiary structure. And that tertiary structure is what is responsible for the function. So um, if you think about things like enzymes, which have got a very complicated three-dimensional shape, uh, where that shape, because of the active site, is really important. And if it changes, that enzyme will probably no longer function at all. So any change in function is ultimately going to be a result of a change to the primary structure. That is because of changes to the DNA. So for example, if we had a mutation where um, a thymine base replaced this cytosine base here, that would then result in a change in our RNA. So we've now got a different RNA codon, which means that we get in this instance, a different amino acid. Now we'll see later in the video that, that isn't always the case, but in this instance we do. So we've now had a different amino acid inserted, which means we've now got a different primary structure than we had before. So this is a situation where the mutation is going to affect us because a change in primary structure is probably going to lead to a change in the tertiary structure and then a change in the function. It's possible that a change in the primary structure won't cause a change in the tertiary structure, but it usually does. Another example, so if we just return to our original um, DNA, RNA, and primary structure. Another example here is the thymine is substituted in this position, which again causes a change in the RNA. But this time, instead of coding for an amino acid, this RNA codon, UCA, is a stop codon. So if this mutation happens, then we're definitely going to get a big effect in terms of protein because it will stop the rest of the, um, the sequence from being translated. So that would cause a big problem and the protein definitely it probably wouldn't even exist in the first place. So mutations will affect us if the change in the DNA base causes a change in the amino acid sequence, which is the primary structure, which will then lead to a change in the secondary tertiary structure and therefore a change in function. So what we're going to do now is look at the different types of mutation that occur. So the first example is an insertion. And when you get an insertion, you get something called a frame shift. So here is our sequence. This is our original sequence, which I'm just going to leave here the whole time. So we, again, we've got our DNA. It's slightly different from the last sequence. So there's our DNA. There's the corresponding RNA that's been transcribed. And here is our amino acid sequence. So this is our original. So if we have a change um, and a base is inserted, so if we were to insert um, a nucleotide with an adenine base at this position here, then what would happen is that the whole sequence of codons would be shifted. So because the codons are a sequence of three uh, bases, which then codes for an amino acid, at the moment we've got T, G, and C. If we add or insert an A in there, then these two are no longer going to fit in this codon. The codon's going to have to shift. So the A comes into position there, and the third base in the codon will be this G. So we've now got the first codon in DNA being TAG, whereas before it was TGC. So these two have shifted along one position. That means we've then got a different RNA sequence, 
which means we have in this case a different amino acid. So now this C is part of the next codon, the first position. So those three are all going to shift along. So the second codon will now have C, A and G, which means that the RNA sequence changes, the amino acid also changes. So now this third codon, C has got to come in in the first position, which means that they shift along C, T and A, RNA changes, amino acid changes. And then this is just the, the last part, so this C has to come in. That C is going to move along. And so we're left with an extra uh, base at the end. So if you can compare our original sequence here and our final sequence after our frame shift, you can see that um, we still have the same sequence here. So it's GCA, GCT, ACC. That's still here, GCA, GCT, ACC. But it's been shifted along one position. The codons are still in their original position, and so you've had this frame shift. This has a massive effect in terms of protein function because, of course, um, any codon downstream of where the insertion happened is probably going to be altered. So it's not just one amino acid which ends up changing, it's potentially every single amino acid in the sequence. You also get a frame shift if you have a deletion. So I'll show this in a slightly different way. So here is our original. If we were to delete this nucleotide here with uh, the guanine base, then what would happen is that effectively the codons would shift. So we've now got one, two, this A is going to be the third position in the codon. So the codons is now TCA for our DNA. So it's shifted position. So we now have a different amino acid. The next codon again is now GCT. So that the codon's shifted position. So we now have a different amino acid there. And the last one again shifts across. So again, a deletion causes a frame shift, which means that every amino acid, uh, every codon and every amino acid downstream of the deletion is going to be affected. Substitution mutations have slightly less of an impact usually. Um, and a substitution mutation, if this is our original DNA, there's our RNA. So here's our amino acid sequence. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a substitution. So the G is just going to be substituted for an A. So a different nucleotide comes in, which means that we then have, again, uh, instead of the C, we would have a U in our RNA. And we now have UAG, which gives us a different amino acid. And in this case, it's a stop codon. So nothing either side of where the substitution took place has been affected. Now in this situation, because there's a stop codon, however, that obviously does have a big effect because although the, uh, the codons haven't been changed here, this stop means that anything down here is not going to be translated. So this is called a nonsense mutation where the substitution causes a stop codon. And this is an example where a substitution will have um, a big impact on our protein function and it will probably result in a completely non-functioning protein. Another possible substitution mutation, in this case the uh, this C is substituted for a G, so there's our change in our RNA and this time we get a different amino acid here. This is called a missense mutation where the substitution causes a change in that single amino acid. Again, this, this is um, it's going to cause a change probably to the protein because it's caused a change in the primary structure here, um, which will therefore ultimately affect probably the tertiary structure. But it's not going to have as much of an impact.
It could do, but it probably won't have as much of an impact. Certainly the impact won't be as big as a frame shift, and it's not as big as when you have a nonsense mutation with the stop codon. The third kind of substitution mutation is seen in this example. So this time we're going to substitute a T in for the C. And in this case, we've now got CAA. So before we had CAG, we've now got CAA. And if you look on the codon table, you'll see that this still codes for the same amino acid. This is called a silent mutation. This is a result of having a degenerate code. So because we have more than one codon for each amino acid, it's possible that a substitution mutation will make no difference to the amino acid and therefore no difference whatsoever to the primary structure, the secondary tertiary structure, and no difference at all to the protein function. So substitution mutations can have a big impact if it's a stop codon, a nonsense mutation. It could have an impact if it's a change which causes a single amino acid to change, which is our missense mutation, but it could have no impact at all in terms of protein function if you get a silent mutation. Okay, that's all. Thank you.